Yeah, hello YouTube. This is Crowd68 from Germany. And um, this is a video on uh, the question whether uh, the term Oriental Tobacco actually um, is a category that's worth something or <laughs> it's just a marketing trick uh, by tobacco companies to evoke exotic images in our mind uh, in order to make us buy their tobacco, right? Now, how did I arrive at this question? Um, I'm At the moment, I'm preparing a review of this tobacco by W. Larsen called Black Diamond. And uh, here on the back of the of the tin, it says uh, that it is a uh, black diamond is a mixture uh, made with broadcut uh, Burley, Virginias, and uh, Orientals. Right. So uh, obviously, the marketing guys thought that mentioning Orientals um, is worth something. Uh, the question is, <laughs> what is it actually worth? And uh, I found, uh, when I did some research, uh, this is very interesting, and I wanted to share this result of my research. Now, um, uh, according to my Merriam-Webster <laughs> dictionary, which I run to when I <laughs> want to find out about words, a category is a group uh, of people or things that are similar in some way. Now, does this apply to oriental tobaccos, yes or no, right? And the answer is actually um, quite surprising. At first sight, it does apply, right? All orientals are relatively expensive tobaccos because they're picked by hand. They're relatively rare and they only make up 8% of the world tobacco production, right? Um, all oriental tobaccos are small leaf tobaccos. Um, the leaf is only the quarter of the size of a Virginia leaf and uh, they usually, usually, so it says on online, relatively low in nicotine content, sweet and rich in essential oils. These essential oils, they're found in the wax and coating on, on, the, on the leaf and, um, uh, and these wax and coating, uh, the plant is producing that f uh, uh, because of the extreme summer heat to protect against um, drying out in the sun, right? Oriental, oriental tobaccos are mostly sun-dried um, for 14 to 21 days after they've been picked and then they're cured in bales, right? Uh, so all this sounds like a very unifying feature and therefore the categorization would make sense. But um, if we stop scratching at the surface and dig a little deeper, then um, things change, right? Uh, they change quite considerably, right? Um, so, um, for instance, if we are talking geography, right? Question, um, do all Orientals come from the Orient? And the answer clearly here is no. <laughs> um, there is a tobacco called Jebel Orient, which is grown in Morocco. Morocco is not part of the Orient, right? Um, there is a tobacco called Tik Kon Lak, right, uh, which is grown in Indonesia. Now, uh, if you are taking Orient uh, with the 19th century definition that everything that's east of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, is part of the Orient, you could actually say that Tik Kon Lak is an Oriental tobacco, although it's grown <laughs> a few thousand kilometers to the east, right, of the classical Orient, right. And then, and this is a, a real surprise, and I hope all people from Belarus will excuse my <laughs> pronunciation here. Then there is uh, Cherven Zvyad Bjaga, which is an oriental tobacco from, you've guessed it, uh, Belarus. And, um, but Belarus clearly is not part <laughs> of the Orient. Probably uh, they've uh, developed this tobacco plant <laughs> during Soviet times. So they didn't have to buy oriental tobaccos from Greece and Turkey, which were bad NATO countries, right? Um, who knows, right? Uh, couldn't find anything about that, right? So geographically, there is no unifying feature here, right? Uh, oriental tobaccos do not need to come from <laughs> the Orient, right? Um, now, what about taste, right? Um, uh, and nicotine levels. Well, here it's the same picture, right? It's a very disparate picture, right? Um, there are mild tobaccos like Shanti, which is also a sweet tobacco, and lower nicotine levels. 
there is quite a strong and sweet uh, uh, tobacco called Zamzun, which is high in nicotine levels, right? And then there is the Smyrna Oriental, which is um, strong but low in nicotine levels. So there is no unifying feature here either. Orientals can actually taste uh, quite differently. There's a, a real range here, right? Now, when we're talking quality, again, <laughs> things become uh, much more complicated uh, than the unifying term uh, Oriental um, uh, suggests, right? Now, Oriental tobaccos are categorized in three categories. There is Jebel, which is growing on top of the mountain, Jebel being the Arabic word for mountain. There is Yaka, which is growing on the slopes of the mountains. And then there is anything else which is called Ova because it grows in the plains, right? And different breeds of tobacco plants have different or like different uh, geographical areas. For instance, the aforementioned Jebel Orient, as the name indicates, likes to grow on mountains and this is where it produces the best qualities. Whereas Orient Basmas, which is from Greece, um, is a yaka tobacco, which is best grown on on the slopes of the mountain. So is Latakia, which is also, technically speaking, an oriental tobacco, although it is a category of its own usually. When you read tobacco tins, Latakia is always especially mentioned, right? Although you could actually bang some <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, Latakia into a mixture and say it contains orientals, and I think you're not breaking the law here, right? So, <laughs> quite interesting, right? So, um, and then there are the Ova tobaccos, which are from the plains, uh, which are not considered good quality. But again, right, if you put a lot of Ova orientals in your tobacco, you could say it contains orientals, right? And it would evoke this, this idea of quality, uh, whereas it's actually a rather <laughs> meek tobacco, right? So, um, all things considered, we have to say that uh, the term oriental tobacco is, isn't is worth a lot as a category, right? What it boils down to for us as um, users or smokers, right, is that we need to read the reviews. Otherwise, um, we are basically um, uh, buying something that is probably evoking uh, a certain idea of a taste which the tobacco will not deliver on because they are so different they are so different, right, in terms of taste and nicotine level, right? So uh, why is it that um, Veo Lazen, um, <laughs> bring it back the tin here, right, in the, into the picture, right? So, yeah, so there you go again. Why is it that Veo Lazen is writing Orientals on the back of the tin where it <laughs> actually doesn't really contain a lot of information, right? Well, the first thing, of course, is that the term Orient always evokes uh, exotic images and stimulates our fancy and um, our taste buds, right? And the second thing is, I think we as tobacco smokers are usually not that versed in our oriental tobaccos. So if you would write Samsun or Shanti or whatever, Jebel Orient on it, it wouldn't ring a bell with us, right? So it doesn't make sense to use a term in marketing that doesn't uh, connect with your customers, right? So that's probably why all these different tobaccos have been grouped under uh, the, the the headline Orientals, right? Um, in order to get an idea what a good Oriental is actually like, I did uh, some research on the Yogi Van blog, which is a German tobacco um, blog. Uh, I put the the link in the box, right? So you can, if you're able to read German, you can uh, read the tobacco reviews, which I think are quite good. And if you're not able to read German, you could uh, use the Google Translator and um, have some fun with the translations because they sometimes turn out quite um, uh, quite funny. Right. So coming back to Oriental tobaccos here, um, this is the stuff I found there. Um, Robert McConnell's uh, the original Oriental pipe tobacco, and I have to say, when I packed my first pipe with this tobacco. Uh, wow, this was probably one of the best pipes I've ever smoked in my life, right? Um, and um, the tobacco is um, 
is um, is is very well conditioned, right? It comes uh, in a as a fine ribbon cup, right? So which you probably can see here, right? Uh, by comparison, I would say um, it feels very Dunhilly, right? Uh, uh, like the ribbon cup compared can compare to to my mixture nine six five for instance or any other of those wonderful downhill uh, blends. The, the nose is actually quite nice. It's a bit levery, contains latakia, so it's it has smells like an English tobacco, but there is an added incense quality, and you can already smell this from the tobacco before you even lit it, right? And if you light it in your pipe, right? Oh boy, right? Uh, <clears throat> amazing stuff. It smokes sweet, cool. It has this incense quality um, in, in in the room note, and uh, it's a fantastic smoke, right? It's plug and play. You just pack the pipe, light it, and I smoked it through. I didn't even relight the pipe once, right? Um, and what remains in the pipe is just a little gray ash, right? So it's um, how it should be, right? So in terms of Orientals, I think um, this is a good starting point. The the uh, original Oriental by Robert McConnell. Um, fantastic tobacco. Strongly recommend trying that. And um, in Germany, it's um, fairly cheap, right? In Germany, it will be 16 uh, euro 60 for 100 grams, which um, compared with the Vero Larsen, which is uh, uh, 25, 40 euros, right? So uh, there's a difference here, right, in the price. And um, but taste-wise, this is this is a great this is a great tobacco. The tin notes, though, <laughs> they're quite confusing, right? I don't know whether you can actually see that. Um, the American or English, sorry, I didn't want to <laughs> offend. Uh, Australians, New Zealanders, uh, and people from the UK here. Um, the English description says Perique, right? The German doesn't. Uh, there's also a description uh, on the on the bottom here, right? And as you can see, it says uh, it has Carolina, Virginia, and Carolina Black Cavendish. Uh, it has Turkish and Syrian Orientals, uh, but the Perique, <laughs> not mentioned, right? And I think it's not mentioned because it's not in there, right? This this tobacco is actually not blended by um, Robert McConnell themselves, but it's blended by Kohlhase and Cobb. How do we know this? We know this from uh, this tax number, right? 26602 is the German tax number of Kohlhase and Cobb, right? So they actually... Uh, made make the blend for Robert McConnell, right? And it's a good one, right? <laughs> uh, whether it contains Perique or not doesn't really matter. It's just a fantastic smoke, right? Um, I think, right? Uh, my personal opinion. Right, so that's all from me about Oriental tobacco. So beware, right, out there, <laughs> you pipe smokers, right? If you read Oriental tobacco on the tin, um, you actually should go and find a review before you buy the tobacco because uh, it might actually turn out tasting completely differently from what you associate with the term of oriental, right? Because uh, the types of tobacco are so different, right? So reviews do help here, right? I think a lot, right? That's all for me for about orientals. Um, take care, stay healthy, and keep your bowls smoking. And uh, greetings from Germany, from Crowd68.